Hello everyone, welcome back to Trey Crochet. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to add a fastener to a wallet. I have already made a video showing how to make a wallet, showing how to make a credit card holder, and I promised you a video showing you how to attach some fasteners to the wallet itself so that it stays shut and will not be in any danger of opening up when you don't want it to. Okay, uh, as I said in this video, the video where I made this wallet, it's not necessary, but it's a nice feature and it's easy to do, so why not? All right, things you will need include a pair of scissors, uh, a smaller crochet hook if you have one. This is kind of optional, but I think it might come in handy. A darning, weaving, tapestry needle, obviously the wallet, the yarn that you used, to make the wallet or if you have a medium yarn or a smaller yarn you can use that but I think it's best to just use the same yarn that you use uh, so that you don't have other foreign colors bleeding through your work and then obviously some fasteners. Let's get to it. Alright so the first thing I want to show you is the fastener. Um, I got these off of Amazon I think it was I will leave a link but you don't have to use that link you can get your own I'm not trying to sell you anything <laughs> I hate uh, marketing all things marketing and you know anything to make a buck so that's not me I'm not your guy um, if you're wondering you know when I tell you guys I put links in the description it's just because I know a lot of people they like to use exactly what you're using so you have that option anyway I got this type of fastener and I think as I said I got it from Amazon and so this the way the easiest way to separate this is to kind of rotate rotate it the magnet is pretty strong you can either try to just pull it apart and if you're not having much luck doing that then you can try to rotate it so that the loops are staggered see how there's a loop then this one is staggered with that so there's a loop and now it's more easy to pull apart once you're staggered, okay? So this is gonna be the top and bottom, okay? And basically you're gonna have this on the top flap, this one on the bottom, and then when you close it, it will snap shut like that, okay? So yeah, just rotate it and then pull apart. You should be able to get it. You can tell it's a very good magnet, okay? So there's that. Then there is the yarn. So you're going to want to cut a decently long piece, okay? And you'll cut it like that. I don't know how long this is. Maybe like about a foot or shy, maybe 11 inches, okay? This, as it is, because of the type of yarn that it is, it's too, well, it's not too thick, but it just makes things difficult. It doesn't need to be this thick. If you saw that video, you'll know that this, you know, it was prone to splitting, which right now is a good thing because that means we'll be able to split this strand. Okay, so what you want to do is where it starts to unravel, just help it a little and then pull apart like that. Now it might start to knot up like that. Just twist it and then continue pulling. And just keep doing that until you get all the way to the end like that okay so now we have these two all right we want to get four out of here this one looks a little bit thicker than this one so we'll start splitting this one so just split it and pull and that one was much easier okay so now we have three you might be wondering why do we want four well remember each of these fasteners has four corners so four loops so we're going to put the yarn through them okay all right and now we'll take our thickest one because we want four and we'll split that one in half or as close to half as possible just get in where you can and you'll kind of see where the strands want to go and then once you're ready I'm not quite ready I'm gonna get these situated a little bit better pull like that and now we have our four strands so one, two, <laughs> three, and then the other one that caught on, four. All right, 
Now that we have our four strands, we will insert them into these holes. So I found the best way to do this is to get the end, and if it's really like shaggly, you can always cut the excess. Just to make it a little bit more even, you see? All right, and then just kind of twist to kind of bunch them together and then fit them through the hole like that and pull through. All right, so now we have that in that corner and I'm gonna do the same thing for all three corners. I'll show you one more. So grab it, if it's really frayed like that, then you can cut it down. Okay, now twist to kind of get it to a singularity or a point and then feed it through the hole. All right, and pull all the way to the halfway point, like that, okay? So continue doing that for the other two, actually the other six, so these as well, and I'll meet you once you complete that task. All right, I have the yarn going through each of the four loops on each half of the fastener, and so now we're gonna go back to the wallet. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. All right, so remember when you use an available one without yarn attached to it, you want this part to be on that side, okay, that part of the wallet, and this one to be up here somewhere. To figure out where to put this one, you need to establish where you want this one first, okay? So do we want this, you want it more of like a center like a central location do you want it lower it's up to you it's personal preference for me i think i'm going to do uh, more towards the lower so maybe like two-thirds of the way down okay so now i'm gonna with the one that has yarn going through it attach it to that okay and then i'll match it i'll match this one to the appropriate space up here so that it will when it closes It'll close, it'll snap into place and close shut. All right, now replacing it with the one that has the yarn in, I'm gonna take my darning weaving tapestry needle and I am going to weave in this yarn to the other side, okay? So put it through like that in my yarn or in my needle. <laughs> and then this is what I'm gonna do. Be careful because if you're using a metal one, it's gonna, there's that magnet. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around a stitch like that and come back out on the other side. All right, and then I'll take that out like that. Okay, and now I'm gonna tie a couple of knots. Now you could pull this side also in on the other side and then tie your knots on the inside, but it, that's kind of hard to do for demonstration purposes, so I'm going to do it on the outside just so you guys can see what I'm doing. It's not a huge deal because I'm working with the same yarn, which means it's the same color, okay? Um, so it'll be fine. It's not going to be much of an eyesore. And yeah, I'm just going to tie a couple of knots like that. Make sure you tie it in such a way that it doesn't cause your fastener to bulge make sure you know it's it's lying flat the way you want it to okay now i'm going to do that with the three remaining and then i'll meet you after that i changed my mind i'm going to demonstrate one more and the reason i got back on is because i want to show you that i think it's best to go to the one across to secure that one first versus down here so it's not pulling you know that way you know you have something to kind of balance it to keep it level okay so once again just weave your tail in so feed it through all right and then find just a nearby stitch go on one side of it and come back out on the other side pull it all the way through like that and once you get through then you can take the yarn out of the darning weave and tapestry needle and then take the other one that you did not weave in on that side and tie a couple of knots with it. So 
one. Make sure that first knot is not super tight, but it's made in such a way that your fastener is positioned the way you want. And then once you're happy with that, your second knot can be super tight. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you. So these two sides are secure. Now I have these two to work on. Now I'll meet you there. All right, so it's fastened. <laughs> the fastener's fastened to the body of the wallet the way I want it. Okay, and now you can take a super small crochet hook and kind of reach on the inside where the yarn is. So just fill around for it. All right, can you guys see that? And now I'm just gonna pull these in like that so they're on the inside okay and then you can tie more knots to secure it on the back side if you want um, or you can just cut them down at that point but yeah grab it and then pull it through and that way you won't have the yarn visible on the outside so see I'm just pulling it through now like that you can see I've pulled two in and now it's not visible two more to pull on. I'm just gonna go in where I can get in just to get in to pull this yarn in. And this is where it helps to have a smaller crochet hook. It helps you get through the stitches a little bit more easily. One more here. I'm just gonna go in right next to where it's tied the knot. So right there, hook it on and then pull it in like that. And now you have no eyesore on the outside, right? As I said, you can tie more knots in here and then cut them down or you can just cut them down at this point. Either way is fine. All right, so now that we've done that, now we can figure out where to place the one up here so that it matches. So if we take this one that doesn't have yarn in it again and just kind of, let's see, try to see where we want it. I think right there, even that much room, that much room. That should work. Yep. Okay. Now lift it up, it's on it. Okay. So that's where I'm going to remember it helps to turn, rotate, and then pull. All right. So, yeah, that's where I'm going to roughly put this one. Leave that much space, which corresponds to that much space down there. Zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see what I was saying. So I'll leave that much space, which kind of corresponds to that much space right there. Okay. Now the thing about this one is we're going to, as I said, use these strands again, but this time you want them to be on the inside because you don't want it to disturb the aesthetic of the outside, right? So let me show you how to make sure that that happens. All right, so if you're worried, really worried about lining this up, we know how far from the top to line it up, right? We have that much space and that much space, but you can also take you know, a pen or pencil or crochet hook and just line it up, go straight up like that and then say, oh, okay. So I want it there and then move it out of the way and then put it there. Okay, make sure that the this bulge is on the outside. You see the other side, it's not really, I mean, there's a bulge, but it's much smaller, right? So make sure the big bulge is is facing outward because think about it that bulge is going to fit into that hole there okay all right so now what we want to do i'll show you an example is you're going to take one of these strands that's in the loop and you're going to feed it through your darning weaving tapestry needle like you did before just feed it through make sure these are really together so that they go through the hole as one or roughly as one you can always kind of like rotate them through all right and once you get it on 
and get all these out of the way <laughs> so you can figure out where where you're at what you're doing who you are what, what your name is <laughs> no just kidding um once you get your bearings then and you get it placed back right where you want it you'll go through a stitch pull it to the outside go around a stitch and come back out and come back out like that right and now you'll take the other strand the other half of that strand that's in that corner and you'll tie a knot or a couple of knots just like before so make sure you tie the first one not super tight to the point where it kind of distorts distorts the placement of of your fastener right so that's pretty good and then once you have it placed exactly how you want it then that second knot can be tied much tighter because it's not gonna adjust it okay and then you see how when I was tying it, it kind of was pulling up a little bit so that's why I like to work opposite in the opposite corner next to make sure that it's straight so once again I will because I have these two strands coming for this loop, right? One, two, in that loop. So I just take one of them and I'll feed it through my darning weaving tapestry needle. But I roll this to make it really small and make it a point so it goes through really easily. All right, and now I go through a stitch like that. And then I just go around a stitch, coming back out to this side. And just pull on one of the, you'll fill the loose end. Okay. Now that I'm back out on this side, I can tie a couple of knots. But remember, tie the first one not too tight initially because you want to make sure the fastener is adjusted the way you want it so we will move these out of the way and then tie a couple of knots between this one so one all right make sure it's turned all right and then the second one much tighter two all right okay so now this corner is secure this corner is secure so now we have these two corners to work on so let's get to it <laughs> Alright, so at this point you can cut these down or if you really want to make sure that they are secure then you can actually take each strand okay so all eight of the strands but take them one at a time and just kind of weave through some stitches in one direction and then taking a slightly different path back in the other direction just like you would weave in your tails with any other at the end of any other project and then cut it down like that okay so that's what I'm going to do for this project and then yeah once I'm done weaving in the other seven or so tails I will meet you at the end of the video and this is what you have so here are all the tails that I cut and this is the finished product okay so I've attached this fastener there and it matches this one there so here's the moment of truth yep 
Okay, and this is very secure because of all the knots I tied and the weaving in of tails at the end. And then just pull it open. Okay. Now I will say that you could just, you know, if you have a hot glue gun, you can glue those on and you won't have to tie tie all these knots. You won't have to, you know, use thread to attach it. But I think this is a much more secure way to do it and it's gonna last longer. If for some reason this does you know it does come up you do lose a strand or so then just do it again just reinforce it and make sure those knots are super tight but yeah this is this is it so that's gonna be it for this tutorial this video but you know I'll see you in the next one in the meantime happy crocheting